Hi, I'm Blonnie Henderson from Moneycube, and I'm here with Claire Louise Murphy from Aviva. Claire has over 15 years industry experience in life and pensions, and her current role in Aviva is Senior Propositions Consultant for Corporate Pensions and Self-Directed Investment Options. Um, today, we are here as part of Pensions Awareness Week 2021, and we're going to be talking about what happens to your pension benefits when you go on maternity leave. So Claire, I'll hand that over to you now to uh, to make a start on. Thanks, Blonnie. It's good to be here um, and good to be part of Pensions Awareness Week. So thank you. Um, yeah, just uh, maternity benefit. It really kind of depends on your own situation, you know, on what your current retirement plan is and what that looks like for you. So it would depend whether you're in an individual pension or if you're part of an occupational pension scheme, because they can be very different. Um, but even if there's no uh, payment in maternity for your retirement, there are other ways that you can make it up. So, for example, if you're part of an occupational pension scheme and perhaps um, you're not paid maternity leave, so you have uh, you get the income from the state then instead. So what you can do to keep up uh, a payment in your maternity leave if you're not paid so you can take out your own personal pension or PS PRSA as long as you don't kind of break the threshold of your pension contributions in the year or then it also depends if your company actually does pay you obviously then you have a payment in maternity leave now your employer isn't obliged to pay maternity benefit but what they are obliged is that your your pension service will never break but they're not obliged to pay your pension contribution or you're not necessarily obliged to pay your contribution as well so what i would say um for a good start to have a look at kind of if you're going on maternity leave and what your plan is, what I would suggest is actually speaking to your HR department or if you have access to an employee handbook, it's likely to be in there and that will tell you then what way uh, your mater or your con pension contribution would be on maternity leave. Great, thanks Claire. So if you are um, if you are due to go on maternity leave and while you're looking up, you know, your, your terms and conditions of going on maternity leave, um, at the same time, have a look into your employer handbook to see um, if it's part of your terms and conditions that, you know, you will get paid. That's probably one of the main things you'll uh, be looking into. And uh, secondly, yeah. um, check out those pension contributions to see if uh, they'll be continued to be contributed on your behalf. And also if uh, if you're going to be required to continue to make those contributions. Um, I know for myself, from my own personal experience, I had two different maternity leaves with the same employer. Um, so on the first one, uh, the terms of the employment uh, was that I had to be with the company for a certain uh, duration of time before I would get paid maternity benefit. Um, so I, I wasn't there long enough the first uh, maternity leave. Um, so I didn't get payment. I got the 26 uh, statutory payment from the government or social welfare. Um, and from my employer, then uh, payments resumed when I returned to work and my pension contributions resumed when I returned to work. But I had that gap while I was uh, off work uh, where those contributions were not being made because I wasn't um, earning a pensionable income. Um, my second maternity leave, um, I was in the company for the required period of time. And these were terms and conditions specific to my employment. And um, I was paid for uh, my 26 weeks uh, maternity leave. And while I was paid for that, my pension contributions into the pension scheme with that employer continued. And uh, on my payslip every month, I could still see that my own contributions were continuing into my pension scheme for the 26 weeks. And um, so you can take an additional 14 weeks maternity uh, leave, which is on page uh, by the social welfare and not required to be paid by your employer. So in that case, uh, you know, pension contributions would also stop for, for that period. Do you have anything to yeah, add? And it, 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 well, it's I was just going to say, well, first of all, it's very interesting that um, and I suppose it's a great awareness piece that people should be aware, you know, that it's not just whether your employer might pay maternity benefit. For example, you had the same employer there and didn't get paid um, because uh, you, you hadn't been in the company long enough. And that's probably something that people should look mm -hmm. at as well. 
you know, first of all, the eligibility and then whether uh, contributions are paid on maternity. Yeah, the, the parental leave, you know, the unpaid leave, again, there can't be a break in um, service, but there can certainly, the employers are not obliged at all to pay uh, the benefit there. But as I was saying, and it comes down probably to affordability as well. You know, if you're on parental leave and you're not getting paid, can you afford to pay into your pension? And um, I think there's a little bit of a myth around pension contributions, you know, or maybe it's just a feeling that if you have other financial obligations at the time, for example, a mortgage or you've mm-hmm. just had a new baby and all the, the costs that, that come with that you know that uh, the pension mightn't be affordable at that time mm-hmm. but what I would say is you know there's plenty of options like you can take it you can make it paid up you can reduce it down to the minimum amount that has to be paid don't forget there's tax efficiencies there for all the payments if you're a 20 percent taxpayer you get to, you know 20 percent tax mm-hmm. relief Equally, if you're forty percent taxpayer, you get forty percent tax relief on your payments. You know, so what you're actually contributing is either only eighty or sixty percent of the the premium. You know, and that might look more affordable. You know, if you were only paying a hundred euro a month into a pension, and you're forty percent taxpayer, so you're only paying sixty euro. Mm-hmm. You know. Are you spending 60 euro during the month on other things like, you know, maybe a takeaway or a drink, which everybody's entitled to, you know, but it's just kind of having a mm-hmm. look and seeing how affordable it is. Um, mm-hmm. And in many cases, it is affordable. It's just people don't realize the tax efficiencies that come with making pension contributions. Of course. Yeah. And I think people, um, you know, some people maybe, you know, still aren't aware how much we have moved on in pensions and how flexible they have become. So, of course, there are, you know, huge tax benefits that the government, the revenue really want us to put money into pensions. So they are making it attractive for us. Um, And on the other hand, in terms of flexibility, you know, if you're not in an employer pension scheme and you have set up a pension off your own back, um, you do have the option to put your payments on hold if you're not being paid while you're on maternity leave. You have the option to reduce those payments. Um, so they are options. There's that flexibility um, while you are not being paid. And then you can resume as soon as your uh, as soon as your money starts coming back in. So you're not you're not stuck. Mm. Absolutely. And and that's what, you know, there's just kind of, in a sense, a little bit of mystery, I think, around pensions or they're Mm -hmm. probably seen as the last on the priority list um, because, you know, you won't receive Mm -hmm. the actual benefit of it for many years. But the idea is that I like with anything, the earlier you save, you know, um, it's the same as like, you know, you may think, oh, I need short term money I want to put that in my bank so it's easy access and um, which is that that's all fair enough and what I would say to you then as well is consider that again if it was a hundred euro contribution you know would you think about splitting that and putting some towards the pension so you're still saving but you also have your rainy day fund you know mm-hmm. uh, we've definitely moved on in Ireland uh, probably not as much as we should uh, there's definitely still the gender gap there for mm-hmm. uh, maternity leave but um, how we have progressed actually is that the revenue have come up thankfully and um, so you know the the home carers credit mm-hmm. so what uh, people that are on maternity leave and in order to be entitled to the full state pension you know if they were on like a couple of successive maternity leaves and mightn't have been in the workforce at a time that contributed to like you know 14 years it could be up to, to 20 years that they weren't working you know we don't want them to lose out on their entitlement to the state pension because the state pension is like it's 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 a big chunk of our, mm-hmm. of our uh, retirement income, you know, mm-hmm. and for some people, that's all they have. So yeah. it is extremely important, you know, And what happens is now if you go on maternity leaves or a few maternity leaves and you're not you don't have the tax credits there what has happened now is the revenue have introduced the home carers tax credit and you're entitled to so it's for children under 12 years of age um, and you're entitled to earn the the tax credits of up to 20 years Mm -hmm. and that will be offset against your calculation for the state pension when you come to retirement age so really it's like saying i was actually in work for those mm-hmm. up to 20 years uh, mm-hmm. when it comes to the calculation. And hopefully that will mean for everybody then that is going on maternity leave, mm-hmm. that they will still be entitled to the full state pension on retirement. So yeah, yeah like uh, plenty of progression, you know, um, 
for maternity benefit and even in pensions we have a bit of a way to go um Mm -hmm. but that's just the way the world is but definitely a lot better than it was 20 or 30 years ago for sure yeah yeah and I think um you know with the 20 years um you know it allows kind of parents to take uh you know career breaks if needed to to you know rear young children at home um, and not have to worry about um, their state pension being affected if they stay within those 20 years for raising the family of children under 12. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, and it, it is, it is a decent chunk of, of time. And of course, you know what I mean? People want to spend as much time as possible as they can with their children at home without those kind of additional worries, you mm-hmm. know? And again, that home carers credit is probably something that like pensions and the tax efficiencies people aren't aware of mm-hmm. so i would encourage everybody to just have a look and see what that means for them it can form part of their when they're going on maternity leave how long they take it for you know what i mean they can plan to make sure that that's included in their calculation uh, when they come to retirement age yeah of course yeah um and then i suppose for um anybody you know who's thinking about starting a pension and maybe they you know are also have family planning on the cards or their children are young and they envisage career breaks etc um like we said there there is so much flexibility around it and um, your employers you know the terms and conditions may support you in pension contributions while you are you know taking that leave um, and the flexibility in your own personal contribution so you know there's you, you can start today you know, set up that pension or contributions or whatever way it may be. And it doesn't mean that you're tied into something and you're going to be at risk of, you know, being short of money if your income uh, does reduce or it does pause. And there's flexibility around that. So um, I suppose the most important thing is to is to really start uh, if you haven't, um, because that flexibility and that support is there. And, you know, we are progressing in Ireland um, in that in those areas. Um, and as well that the contributions don't have to be to be big uh, you know you have plenty of time if you if you start now and time to let that money compound um, and grow the later you leave it the less time there is for the money to compound and it's it's growing tax-free as well I suppose is a big factor yeah absolutely and again you know and I mean you're you're um, 100% correct in what you've said you know and that's again something that maybe people should look at to take a look now if they're planning for the future does their employer uh, provide a maternity payment mm-hmm. if they don't if there's nothing to stop them from starting to invest in their own uh, pension to contribute mm-hmm. to that at all and um, you know that they can use when they're on a maternity leave or contribute sorry to when they're on maternity leave and as well yeah uh, you know like any time to start a pension it is always a good idea and um, and as you said again they go tax-free so mm-hmm. you know your contributions they're tax efficient going in because you get um the tax breaks on them on your 20 percent or 40 percent mm-hmm. and then it also grows tax-free so in comparison to sa- saving in a bank where you could pay exit tax on and mm-hmm. um, if you're invested in a deposit account say for example or you're paying different kinds of tax whereas your pensions do go tax-free mm-hmm. so if you actually calculate again your contribution if you put it into a pension and grows tax-free or mm-hmm. if you put that into a bank and had to pay 33 percent tax on it mm-hmm. which is actually more beneficial at the end of the day you know yeah, so absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah just a, a whole awareness piece I think and just yeah. research as much as you can you know I think yeah. over the years as well definitely something that has progressed is even the language used around pensions and um, you know we probably would have been bogged down in uh, a lot of terms and all that weren't user friendly reader friendly uh, mm-hmm. to people and I think every company in the industry has you know identified that and kind of you know updated even all their their literature their websites and um, you know a lot of them you, you just click onto their websites and it'll follow in through links very easy to use very simple and um, you know so for an individual it's a lot more user friendly and kind mm-hmm. of researching about your pensions and all has mm-hmm. become a lot more accessible and easy uh, than it was a few years ago probably only even 10 or 15 years ago yeah. which has really made a change over the last few years yeah and I think um you know it, there there's a lot more uh 
regulation there you know consumers are uh, more protected now of pensions and um, I think in Ireland there still might be some some you know um, some of a backlash of you know situations that may have happened years ago but certainly the consumer is uh, very protected now in investing in a pension and um, just on the subject of investment just you were mentioning about putting the money into say a deposit account and we were talking about you know, well, if you've invested in your pension, uh, you have a, a, a wide range of funds to invest your pot of money into. The earlier you start, the more, uh, of, you know, a bit of a risk that you can afford to take, which means uh, your money has potential to earn much more of a return. So, you know, you might be putting in as little as 100 a month or 150 or 200, but the potential for that money to grow you know, uh, percentage wise, you know, is much higher a return than you're going to get uh, on deposit with the bank. So uh, there is that element as well. And the longer uh, you have given your funds to do that, the more uh, the more growth you'll see. You're making your money work for you for your retirement. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And as you said, yeah, the earlier uh, you start, the earlier you start earning that that mm. growth, you know. Mm. I would say it's never too late because yeah, of there course. are deficiencies on the way out. Yeah. But obviously, and like, like everything, mm -hmm. even even just in general savings, obviously the earlier you start, the bigger pot mm. you're going to, to have, you know. And it's important. Um, it's important to remember as well that your own pension is just one part of the uh, pillars for saving in your mm -hmm. retirement obviously there is the state pension as well you know so mm -hmm. add the two of them together you don't yeah. just be looking at your own pension pot and kind of doing your calculations on that don't forget about your your state benefit and don't mm -hmm. forget as well you know in retirement um the children that you're going to maternity leave for now will hopefully be grown up uh, mm -hmm. flown the nest you're not paying their college fees or anything <laughs> anymore hopefully your own mortgage um or whatever your own situation and your own financial obligations hopefully they are all gone yeah. so the savings that you have been saving towards and paying towards now that's you know it's it's back to you and mm -hmm. hopefully you don't have other financial obligations and you can actually just enjoy that take your mm -hmm. holiday and do your your post uh, retirement and just enjoy retirement actually people yeah. are living longer as well you know yeah um, and it's just a fact that you know people were when the retirement age was kind of lower the the national retirement age was lower and you were in your 60s you know people were kind of not living beyond 70 so you mm -hmm. had five years or so to re enjoy your retirement but you know that's exploded people are living longer people yeah. are living into their 80s you know so you want to enjoy that 20 years but obviously mm -hmm. to save for 20 years in retirement is something that yeah please start as early as you can yeah. Uh, yeah. it is more affordable than people than people probably absolutely. are aware absolutely so uh, i suppose the three uh, key takeaways for our, our listeners then might look at um you know, number one, if you are family planning or you are pregnant, uh, have a look at your employment terms and conditions. Um, you know, check out, uh, you know, are you going to be paid on maternity leave? Do you have to be there for a specific period of time? Um, do you have something to add to that, Claire? Or? Yeah, I would say then as well, uh, if you don't have a look, don't forget you you won't have broken service. So you can contribute to your own pension mm -hmm. or PRSA. So have a look and see what kind of different products are out there. Obviously, there's a wide uh, range of funds to invest in and a, a wide range of charges and things like that as well. So it's just something to look out for. Mm -hmm. And then I would say uh, to have a research and have a look at the uh, home carers, the credit Mm -hmm. um, and what that means for you on maternity leave and what that might mean for making up um, your your maternity benefit for your state pension, you know, uh, and th those three things all together. So like, you know, researching one, what your current situation is and um, two, if you don't get paid to have a look at your own uh, pension contributions, your own policy and three, then to have a look at the home, home carers credit mm -hmm. uh, going into maternity leave. And that can be for like, you know, you can take that account for uh, multiple um, maternity leave or mm -hmm. equally if you've already had maternity leave and you're not having any other children have a look at that because that will apply to you as well because mm -hmm. it will make up your calculation um, of the up to 20 years when you're retiring great great and then I suppose the other thing is if you um you know if you are yet to start or you have already started a, a pension product off your own back and um uh, you need to to pause or 
decrease contributions while you are on leave, don't forget that that flexibility is there. And, um, you know, your, your financial advisor, like ourselves at MoneyCube, are the people who can take you through that journey, um, as well as the provider, uh, the provider that you're with, they can also uh, give you advice on that, not, not financial specific financial advice, but they can direct you through that journey as well. But uh, indeed, your financial advisor, uh, like us at MoneyCube. So, um, so this is, um, this is a part of Pensions Awareness Week 2021. Uh, we do have some other, um, some other sessions that may be of interest, start a pension and um, essentials, pensions and essentials for parents in Ireland. Um, so just uh, check out the website www.pensionsawarenessweek2021.ie. Thanks very much, Claire Louise. No problem. Thanks, Bonnie. Thanks for having me. Thank you.